One of the biggest mistakes that I see in world building settings, whether they are campaign settings or novel settings, is that people completely forget about plants. Which is crazy, right? Because not only are they important for like every single facet of our life in our world, they're also amazing from plot hooks to character development to interesting world building to really create a super vibrant setting. So in this video, we're going through five and a few more uses for plants in your world. Are you ready? Let's light up the forge. Not only are plants the basis of life as we know it, which is, you know, kind of important, but they're also introduced into pretty much every facet of our life. From books, furniture, medicines, you name it, there are plants there. So if you're looking to introduce more plants into your world, and by the way, you definitely should be, my first tip is crops and spices and other edible or comestible plants. The number of people who forget to make plants in their world is actually kind of mind-boggling. I mean, what are these people eating? Each other? Many societies in our world have traditionally had one or another staple crop, whether that's a grain or potatoes or something else. And of course, if you're looking for interesting conflict, then something like a famine or a lack of grain production, a blight or something similar, is an awesome piece of conflict to set things in motion in your world. And developing hardier strains of a crop can turn an area of wilderness into an area of arable farmland, which means it's ripe and valuable for conquest. And showing your players or readers what people are eating, again, show, don't tell, is a great way to convey their social status, how connected they are, and all that good stuff. If they're eating luxury or expensive crops, probably they have quite a bit of money, or else there's something spoofy going on. And when you're talking about crops and spices, remember that luxury goods must be transported. In the Renaissance period, they invested huge amounts of time and money trying to open up the spice trade. That is how valuable it was, and indeed, that's how America was discovered, at least by the Europeans. People living there probably had already found it. Trades in spices can bring about organisations like the East India Company from our world and many more, and they are a fantastic way to introduce all sorts of interesting conflict and factions and political bodies around a plant. Cool, right? But if your world is already brimming with spices and exotic goods and delicious crops, then I suggest tip number two, building materials. So many fantasy worlds look just like this. Wooden floors, wooden furniture, wooden ceilings, wooden everything, right? Wood was historically, and continues today, to be a super important building material. In the past, it was used for everything from houses and furniture to war machines and shields. As with all resources, figuring out where they're sourcing it and how difficult it is to get hold of is going to give you all sorts of information about how hard it is to do something or how expensive it is to build something within a region of your world. And of course, not all wood is created equal. Some wood is harder or denser than others. Some is more flexible. An example of this is the blackwood tree in Pathfinder's Galarian setting. It's super hard and super light, which means it's really good for shipbuilding. And it's also really hard to get hold of. That means all sorts of interesting pacts with druids and shortages and interesting logistical problems, which make great adventure hooks. And if you have fantasy wood with magical properties, I'm thinking Discworld's sapient pearwood or the arcane trees, this might be even more rare and valuable. And if it's not, think of the ramifications in society. With all the plants that we're talking about in this video, remember that they may be limited resources which don't grow quickly, they may be limited resources because they only grow in certain regions, biomes or climates, and if they're valuable or important, they'll be valuable trade commodities, which opens up all sorts of interesting adventure hooks, campaign setting ideas, and cool ways to introduce conflict and drama into your setting. So let's say you've introduced all of your crops and you've forested your world with trees aplenty. My next tip is medicines, potions, and poisons. 
Whether they're magical fictional plants or just mundane ones, plants of all kinds have properties which can hurt, harm, help or bamboozle us. Many of the medicines that we take even today are derived from plants. Aspirin is from willow bark, digitalis is from foxgloves, and morphine comes from opium poppies. Plants are also a great source of poisons, so if you have assassins in their world, their gardens will be full of these. Classic examples are belladonna, also known as deadly nightshade, and hemlock, which has a long tradition of doing in important Greek people. But sometimes plants which create poisons to protect themselves can find that they have a different effect altogether. Tobacco produces nicotine as an insecticide. It's the same reason that coffee beans produce caffeine. Unfortunately, humans think they're freaking delicious. Whilst tobacco and coffee are considered socially acceptable drugs, at least in Europe, they are potent both chemically and financially. Thinking about which drugs or stimulants are acceptable and therefore eminently marketable in your world is going to give you a whole new insight into the way that cultures work. How are they farmed or monetized, and how are they grown in big enough quantities to be commercially viable? Because generally, that has a big old impact on the environment. And remember to think about how these stimulants might be viewed in different cultures as well. What's legal in one place may not be legal, or at least accepted, in another. And remember that opinions change over time, and research can reveal new properties of an old plant. For example, Belladonna, which is also known as Deadly Nightshade, used to be a beauty product. Stuff changes, guys. So, uh, what are you wearing? No, no, not in a creepy way. But if you're wearing cotton or linen or rayon or bamboo fibre, you're wearing plants. Other real-world examples of plants which are used for fibres include nettles, flax, seaweed, bamboo, hemp and even more. Or how about this guy, the Abanith giant from the Tome of Beasts 2, whose clothes are made from freaking fungus. Which makes sense, right? I mean, what else grows in the Underdark where this guy hangs out? Actually, it's not even that far-fetched. People are making clothes out of fungus in our world too. So obviously the finest fabrics, whatever they are, will be the most sought after in your world. You may also find that your fantasy plants create fantasy properties in the clothes that they are used to make. How about a cloak of invisibility or the boots of flying, for example? Another interesting use for plants within this sphere is for colourful dyes. After all, the Phoenician Empire got rich off dyes and cultures in your world can too. Pomegranate rings, indigo fera leaves and chestnut hulls are all commonly used in the fashion industry even today. And if your plants are magical plants or fantasy plants, they may even fluoresce, turn invisible, or have other interesting features. Remember that the more desirable or rarer the colours are, which goes into the sort of social representations of colour within your culture, the more valuable they will be. This is another interesting one to build businesses and factions in your world, and uh, again, create a lot of conflict and interest. And tip number five for creating fantasy plants, magical plants, or even mundane plants in your world, is give them sapience and turn them into monsters. If you're a dungeon master or game master, or even if you've read The Lord of the Rings, you'll be familiar with Ents and Treants. But there are a ton more options too for sapient plants. From mushroom boys to vine golems, Fantasy plants are a great way to up the weird and wonder factor of your world, whether you're writing a fantasy novel or an RPG game. They're also a really good way to dig into and enhance whichever biome the scene is taking place in. Really bring that to the fore. By the way, a big old thank you to the gorgeous beans at Cobalt Press who have let us use their artwork for this video. I highly recommend you go check them out. The art and the writing oh, is stunning. As with all monsters, remember to consider the four Fs. That is feeding, fleeing, fighting, and uh, bonking, I guess. If they're intelligent, which they might well be, then make sure that you give them some kind of culture as well. They may even have a language, which are always fun to make. You can also check out our video on how to create cultures, linked at the top and in the description of this video. Of course, there are hundreds more uses for plants in this world. I won't unpack any more, but just as a quick list, 
Fuel is a great big one. What are people using to keep warm? Status symbols, for example, the pineapple in the 18th century, which was necessary to be a cool kid. A bioluminescence, a particularly bioluminescent fungus, which is apparently in every single fantasy world in the entire universe. Ritual significance of plants, like the prophecy tree in ancient Greece. And plants are also important for replenishing the soil, feeding animals, preventing erosion, and encouraging biodiversity. Super important things for your world, guys. Make sure that you are creating them. Speaking of which, it's challenge time! So your challenge, should you choose to accept it, is create a plant species that is harvested for use by at least one culture in your world. This prompt uses the species world building template on World Anvil, which you can use to create anything from bacteria to space whales to elves to dwarves to, in this case, plants. Another feature that will be really useful for plants is the content trees, which allow you to create a whole hierarchy of what is related to what in your world. And if it's a creature for an RPG game, why not throw in a stat block for when the Triffid attacks? Submit your prompt using the URL, which will be on the screen in just a moment, or you can find it in the description too. And make sure you check out other people's entries there too, if they've chosen to make them public. There's always someone doing something awesome on World Anvil. So, what's your favourite fantasy or fictional plant? For me, it's got to be the sapient pearwood from the Discworld series. Gotta love that luggage. If this video was helpful, or if it made you think, then please click that like button and subscribe for more world-building advice and tutorials. I'll be back next week with another video, but in the meantime, grab your hammer and go world-build. because that's going to build such cool factions around this plant and around that ha hobby, ha ha hobby, ha hobbit, habit, habit, not hobbit, habit. So the places which were previously unaggregable, aggregable, it is technically a word, but I don't think we're going to use it in this video.